It is live. It is a Sunday, uh, Sunday evening, and today, or tonight, we're going to continue where we left off yesterday. So, yesterday I was thinking about um, adding the context here to the click interactor. And I realized, um, or sorry, to add the click interactor, we need to add the context to um, this click method. Um, and the click method is inherited from the default selenium element. However, I realized that that is completely wrong and that I do not want to do that. Um, so, yeah, that's fun. Because um, we need an execution context, but we don't need it here. We need it somewhere else. Uh, so, uh, where we need it is um, up top here, so it exists. Oh, actually, now that I think about it, that's not going to work either. All right. Because I was thinking that we could create it whenever we... No, actually, we don't. No, no, no. What am I doing? We need a browser. So we don't, we don't actually need the context itself. We just need the browser, which is in the context. However, since an element... Is an element bound to its browser? Should be. Or should it not be? Um, hmm, that raises, uh, that raises some questions, doesn't it? Oh, I thought this was going to be simple. The element comes from a browser, but the locator, so really all the configuration information gets stored on the locator. Ugh, hmm. Yeah, I thought that was going to be easier to think through, but it's apparently not. <clears throat> the click interactor, does it need a context? Does it actually need need a context? No, it only needs a browser. But I'd rather have it have a context. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then yes, we're going to have to add a version with the context because the element itself should be usable by multiple browsers. <clears throat> I did not think that this would be this hard to think through. So this needs to be click. This needs to be execution context. Context, right. So what we were wondering yesterday is what to do. Uh, we don't need the default. What we were wondering yesterday is what do we do about the default um, method also? Why do you compile but you don't. Whatever. Um, let's try this. So yeah, we're wondering what to do about the default method. Uh, or not the default, but the uh, like no arguments click method. Because this will work. Like This is going to work. Uh, it turns out... Well, actually... Does the element... The selenium element. All right. So this just stores a web element. So the only place that we could technically use the interactors is in the decorator. So the decorator could be bound to a browser, or it could be <coughs> could be bound to a script. Hmm. It might be worth binding it to a script. I actually am okay with that. So in that case, element uh, here does not need this. Eventually, we're gonna we're gonna figure out what this needs. Um, eventually, but yes. So configuration of the element will be bound to the page, and the interactor or no. The decorator will be bound to the script because it will carry the context, yes, because the context itself might change the interactors that you want. Um, I think that's true. Let's pretend that it is. And if it's not, we can deal with it later. Uh, so this, uh, so we're going to have a protected 
protected execution context context cool and we're gonna say uh, this dot context is equal to context context cool oh yeah let me double check something really quick uh, mute twitch let me double check because last time I tried to do this or last time I um, was streaming which is yesterday um, I I did not change the actual stuff here. Yeah, okay. I actually changed the title this time. I remembered. Good. Okay, that being said, I know that's the correct ordering of that. We want the interactors down there. Uh, so this is not going to need to do that. It's just going to need to do that. That's the default selenium method. All right, that's good. So, <clears throat> now the default page. So this already has navigate context perfect because it needs that anyway. It needs to know what it's doing anyway. And then this with get element we oh with the get element we already have the context. Okay, that's great. Um, because we need it anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, for the locator, right? Most locators depend on the context, so we're always going to have that. Okay, that's great. What that means is that we can just add the decorator at this layer, and well. Yeah, we could add the decorator at this layer. Uh, we'd have to do some caching, but yeah, we could add the decorator at this layer. That'd probably work. <coughs> uh, the locator always fires. So actually, I think we'd add it at the locator level, not at the um, element level. Hmm. Something like that. It does get a little mind bendy. I know that. Because it really does raise the question. Mm. Yeah, it really does raise the question of where that should exist. Because mm. <clears throat> we need the context to get the browser. We could need other things, we could store other things in the context that the interactors might need. Um, this would be easier if we had something like Spring, but the problem is, is that I want client code to be able to use Spring, so I don't want to put Spring into this. Hmm. Are there better patterns? Where else could we store this execution context? I mean, we could pass it in. Could require it to be passed in. Well, okay. Okay, yeah. Maybe I've been convinced that it needs to be passed in. I know, I'm going back and forth on this, but... Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if I can do void click. I'm wondering if I can at deprecate it this. Do you allow that? Because we can get rid of this, right? We can add this. And it will say, hey, don't do that. So we do actually get the it's deprecated warning. OK. Do we need to overwrite it is the question. <coughs> Um, oh, that's always the question. Just call this with the context. Yeah, this way we get warnings from deprecation. The only problem is, is that if we try to, if someone calls this, they would not know that they're not getting the interactor version. That's the problem. And the interactors may not be able to fire without, um, may not be able to fire without a uh, context. And so from this, once we've gotten to this point, it's too late, we can't get the context anymore. <clears throat> but it does appear that if we add this here, we can deprecate the Selenium version. Yeah, it really becomes a weird thing. Hmm. I 
mean, I guess it can... But you wouldn't know. That's, that's the problem, is that you wouldn't know. <clears throat> until it's too late. It's so annoying. It's so annoying. Because I really like the idea that the element conforms to web element. It just doesn't work with the context. <coughs> hmm. Hmm. I mean, I suppose... Yeah, just calling it deprecated and throwing an exception is probably the way to do it. Because <coughs> uh, that way, yeah, at least you'd know at some point that it's not allowed. spelled this exception exception yes there we go <clears throat> uh, cannot use click from web element <clears throat> element use click execution in context execution context instead All right, can this, can we actually put things in here? Will you, since from remove for removal? <coughs> no, okay. So at least this will compile now. So the Selenium element, this has an issue because we need to add the unimplemented method, which is this, and this only needs to override this and then we can get rid of that just do if element dot click I mean it can have a pass through to either one that's fine and then the virtual element what do you need to add do you really need to add I oh, know virtual element just needs to add this okay not a huge fan of doing this this way but yeah all right yeah, anytime people are using an element as target, it'll say, hey, um, don't try to click unless you have an execution context. Uh, that should work. Uh, but we need to do that with send keys um, and, and a bunch of other stuff. Maybe not submit. Still, I still don't like that. I'm still, I really don't like that. <sighs> no, we can't do that. It just, no, just no. Like, it just can't be a thing. No, we gotta make this work. We gotta make this work. <coughs> Okay, yeah, we gotta make this work. Um, um, how can we set the execution context? That is the really difficult part. Because hmm. hmm. this would have to be unique to a um this has to we either have to pass it in which we can't do or we have to populate it when it has to be script at script level so at worst that would mean 
whatever elements you used would have an object created that was associated with them. I don't know how bad that is. Because <clears throat> the default element stuff can still be used. So you'd have an element that would point to the, basically be a selenium element, and then we'd have a decorator around it. That would be in the worst case. Actually, in the best case, you wouldn't need to store it. So in the worst case, I think we can spring for the worst case here. I think that's fine. So yeah, let's just say execution context. Uh, context. Yeah, and then this will work. Okay, execution context, context. And in the browser, it might, it's the thing, like in the browser, it might, hmm, I still don't like it, but I think we'll have to learn to live with it. So virtual element, yeah, yeah. You're going to have issues because why? Sure, add whatever the unimplemented method is. It is click. Okay, that's fine. Nope, we don't want that there. We want that there. Yeah, okay. Shift O, okay. Yeah, we'll just have to live with this, and yeah, that'll just have to work. Okay, so default page. So the way that this needs to work now, um, whenever we get an element, so what we need to do is we need to have some place to store the element's configuration. So in this case, we have, let's say, the click interactor. In this case, uh, we have the element interactor decorator, right? We have our click interactor here, and then our click JavaScript interactor, whatever that might do and whenever that might actually be implemented. Or sorry, in this case, it would just be uh, context, context.get. We'd want to get a browser. which has the ability to execute some JavaScript stuff. We would say get, and I believe it's key dot, key dot browser dot get value, or dot value. And I think we would say uh, execute, or no, uh, get, no. Isn't it JavaScript uh, run? God, I can't remember how to do it. Uh, web driver run JavaScript script. Okay, we don't need that. Driver run JavaScript script. Hmm. JavaScript executor. Okay, okay. So yeah, the driver can generally be cast to a JavaScript executor. Okay. Hmm, interesting. So what that would tell me is that within browser, we could add, hmm. So wait, what method are we using here? Okay, uh, Java duck. Apparently this comes from you. Okay, actually you can just huh. Hmm. Ooh, getting a little bit of lag. It looks like interesting. Because it looks like not every driver can run JavaScript. That's interesting. <clears throat> okay. So wait. It looks like all of them actually can. Wait a minute. So why does WebDriver not implement it? Yeah, huh. 
That's weird. That's quite weird. Um, if that's the case, I mean, beyond the script executor, or executor, or yeah, that I mean, because that's not necessarily true though. But I mean, it would crash if it couldn't. So I might as well. Because like the default browser is just going to have a couple unimplemented methods. Which is execute script. There's actually those two. Wait. But it can't. So pin isn't required? Pin and unpin aren't required? That's weird. Is that true? Oh, it has a default. Okay. Um, I mean, if they're defaulted, you might as well not mess with them. So, I mean, this is really just JavaScript. Executor. JavaScript. Executor. Driver. Um, <coughs> that execute script. Script, which is just script and arguments. Okay. And I mean, yeah, it's just gonna do whatever it does. Okay. It's fine. Yeah, and then this way we just execute the script. So you dot execute script. Yeah. And then whatever our um, element is. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Hmm. Now, I'm not sure how it binds elements to the, um, I'm not sure how, oh jeez, okay. So you do start to run into problems, because I, I imagined you would, but I didn't imagine this would be an issue. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I think that Hmm. That might be the nail in the coffin, actually. Hmm. I think it is. Because I can't think of a way around that. Hmm. I mean, pretending that it's not happening isn't going to work. Hmm. I mean, it's technically a web element, but it's not... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay. Hmm. So you have to preserve... You have to preserve the web element. Otherwise, oh, that really sucks. Yeah, because it wouldn't recognize that. Oh, that really sucks. It's cross domain policy, blah, blah, blah. It's particular for creating your XHR. Access to the frame, most for troubleshooting. For an HTML, this returns a web element for a decimal. Unless the value is null, arguments, number of string. Arguments will be made available via the arguments magic variable. Function, we're called function.apply. Interesting. 
Maybe empty returns that, blah, 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 blah. Okay. <clears throat> That's very interesting. So, execute script async. Got switch to that. Find element dot send keys. Hmm. That's really unfortunate. Unless they're unique, but they're not. Hmm. <coughs> hmm. Because hmm. that could never execute if this is not, if this doesn't have a web element. I mean, this basically needs uh, like this. And like that. <laughs> because, yeah. And what these are for is they're for basically telling Seleni or telling it if you want to use, let's say, a JavaScript sort of command, the only way to Yeah, I was hoping to avoid these, but apparently we can't. So if you want to use a JavaScript command and you want to pass in a web element, so let's say you want to click an element using a JavaScript command you either have to use the same locator, but a locator could have um, arguments passed into it, so you could have like an indexed locator. So you can't just pass in one of the elements that we've created. You have to actually get the Selenium version of it, which is so annoying. But I think we have no choice. So this would return true, as that would always return true, and then we'd just return web element here, which I hate. But what we'd have to say is if element dot has web element. So if it doesn't, we need to throw an exception. or we can require that this be an element, but there's not really any advantage to doing that. Um, Execute JavaScript without a web element. Yeah, otherwise, I believe it'd be. This is the script you usually execute, I think, is like argument zero dot click or something. Something of that nature. And then you would need to say uh, element dot get web element. Assuming it has one, yeah. That's how you'd have to do that. Then of course this delegates those methods to its um, inner element. So return element dot has web element, and then web element or element dot get web element. <coughs> so this could never wrap a Selenium element directly. I don't think there's a better design for that. <coughs> so 
So this would end up needing to be false, yes, as always. And returning null is actually the desired behavior here. I mean, really, it shouldn't return. It should just throw. But, you know. Is a clicking element. So, yes, that is the cost of. Yeah, that is the cost of doing this. Which is unfortunate. And so, of course, the way to test this is that we create a web page that has a uh, button on it. Uh, so we'd say, what would we say? We would say, open VS Code. <coughs> I mean, I suppose I could do this um, in, I suppose I could do this in Eclipse, but I don't, really don't want to. You can do a button tag type, oh, a button type equals button, input, whatever. Click. Okay. Then ID equals button. Okay, and let me just double check that that worked. seems to work to me. That's good. <coughs> so our test page, wherever that might have gone, it's not in the browser module. It's in Gherkin. Okay. It would be in pages. It would be test page. And then we would want to put an element here, the ID of which would be button. We will call it button. And now what we need to do is we need to have the interactor configuration. So for the with annotations, I suppose. <coughs> so I believe the way that I want this to look. Just with click. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. <coughs> Guess we'll just call it click. And then it will have some class that uh, extends a click interactor. Reactor. And then this will just be the value. Right, okay, perfect. Annotations can conform to interfaces, right? So I could create, or no, can't, they can't, right? No, they. Can they? Oh, really? They can't? Wait, why can it not be a result to a type? That's very weird. Right, it's, it's enums that can conform to interfaces, not annotations. You have to use a meta annotation. Oh, that's annoying. That's really annoying. Okay. <coughs> so, have the locator here. We need a map from element to configuration. <coughs> or would we? 
No, because the decorator itself is the configuration. But the decorator would only get created. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So this is the name to locator. Okay. Then we can create the decorator without the actual element. Because we don't actually need to know it. So the decorator sort of serves as the configuration. <coughs> Say the element interactor decorator. <coughs> Say element name to um, decorator. Call this a hash map. All right. So then when we go to add the element, we actually want to add a decorator as well. And hmm. if the decorator has not been created, we, we want to create it, or if it hasn't been, well, it would be bound to the element. So the decorator doesn't need an element to be created. We'd like it to ideally have an element to get created. <coughs> So I suppose when we get the element, yeah, when we get the element, we would say we have element name to decorator. So the decorator has been called. Now it contains key name. Uh, then what we would do, well, we don't have the configuration though. Oh, this is so annoying. Hmm. Uh, We want to store the configuration when we create the element, but we don't want to store it in two places. We could create yet another object, but I don't like doing that either. I'd love to create the decorator, but we could set the element into the decorator? I guess I don't like that either. I don't like any of this. This is the part where my brain just sort of isn't sure what to do. <coughs> because we can get the element. OK. The locator could wrap the element in the deck. No, it couldn't. Yes, it could actually. Yes, it could, because yeah, that would work. Okay, I will take that. So this is the element, no, no, the element locator, wherever that might be. Locator, so the element on page locator here. <coughs> nope, the XPath locator, that's what it is. Oh, 
what we need is we need a wrapped element locator. Or no, decor. Um, yeah, we'll have a decorated element locator. So this will apply decorators. So this will be our implements element locator right here. Cool. Yep, and then this uh, actually will extend the decorated element locator. Okay, cool. That'll work. Yeah, everything is implemented. That's good. Don't worry about that. <coughs> now this. So we're going to override that anyway. But what we want to do is we want to, whenever this is created, we want to store a locator or a decorator. So we want to say public decorated element locator, right? <coughs> what we want to do is we want to require a element uh, interactor decorator. And so this is the configuration. And then whenever we return, or whenever we, could this be abstract? No, it can't be abstract because we want to enforce this in the constructor. We want to say protected uh, element, element interactor, decorator, decorator. So this dot decorator equals decorator. <coughs> and then this we don't want to really implement, we just kind of want to return null. Uh, we want to have a protected element decorate. Element element return uh, decorator decorator. <coughs> dot hmm. I guess we don't need to require this at construction because it may not be used or it may not have been it may not ever get used so we just uh, actually we don't even need the, the context what we need is we just need to call decorate uh, public uh, void now yeah, element decorate. Element element. Execution context context. Ele uh, no. This dot element. Dot element equals element. This dot context dot context equals context. Cool. And then this just returns the element. Okay, so with here we have execution context, execution context context. So we call decorator dot decorate element context. Then we just return it, just so that it's a nicer looking pass through method. And then this we never want to call this. We never want this version of it called. And so you, yeah, you need to have, must be explicitly invoked by the constructor. So this needs to call decorated element. No, uh, element decorator, no. Uh, decorate, no, wait, what does this need to actually be called? Element interactor decorator, yes that. And then we need to say this of a decorator. Is that how you do that? Super? Yes, that's how you do that. And so what we actually want to return is not a selenium element, but a decorate. Return decorate. I want to return that with the context. There we go. <coughs> so now, yeah. And I don't know if we want to do caching or not. Hmm. I mean,
mean, we might as well implement that at some point, right? Yeah, this needs to probably throw an exception. Throw new runtime yeah, exception. Exception. Calling uh, get calling default version. Version of get. Okay. So yeah, this will allow for decorated stuff to happen. So this way we apply the decorator, we create the decorator. The decorator basically just stores the configuration for the element, which is fine. And then whenever we get the context, we just make sure to decorate the element. Yeah, okay, that'll work. And then in this case, we can technically reuse the decorator, which is fine. Uh, I don't know that we necessarily want to do that, but we can. Uh, and I think it should cause no issues. So this one, this now has an issue. Okay, so this is only an issue if the decorator exists, right? So this, here, no, we need, so we need the decorated, so basically if decorator not equals null, uh, yeah, not equals null, because you could technically, well, no. No, no, no. Because in this case, hmm. So it may or may not be decorated. Right. <coughs> so if the decorator is null, then we don't do anything. No, let me just return the element because we're not doing any decorations. There we go. So what we would normally say is an undecorated version would look like that. And so that would just return the default with no decoration at all, which is fine. So technically this should still work. Hello. How's it going? Oh god, what did I just do wrong? What did I do? Oh god. Oh yeah, okay. I mean, you're already asking a question, right? Yeah, yeah, sure you can. I know, what I'm doing is probably either confusing or pointless. I haven't figured out which quite yet. Um, but sure. worked. What I should probably do is get rid of this, right? Uh, oh yeah, that's going to break. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay. Uh, and the user clicks the element button. Sure. Let's see if this works. gonna get. Uh, so that apparently worked. I don't know why. I don't think it should have. Uh, so let's check here. You say it clicks the button. No. Um, Okay, I am so I am just a newbie trying to get into the career. I'm going to go to college for a degree in CS. I have a problem. Problem. I am told to start learning how to program. Currently, twenty. 
I have been trying to teach myself programming and not been perfectly lucky. Started and he to give. So I I actually um, tried to teach myself to program originally as well, and uh, I had a, I had a lot of trouble with it. Um, C sharp is actually a really good language to start learning. Um, it's a little bit better. Like I'm currently using Java. Um, Java is Java is a little bit simpler than C sharp, but C sharp is just in general a better language. Um, as far as ways to learn. Um, I mean, it really comes down to just, you have to find, I don't know, for me personally, the way that I learn, the way that I learn a lot of stuff is I will try to boil stuff down to its simplest possible form and then sort of experiment with it from there. Um, so like in Java, you can write a very quick uh, sort of hello world program and then you can just start a sort of experiment from there, you know. So you can do system out, print line, you know, print ln, and then you can just sort of modify, you can sort of modify it from there, and that's usually what I do, is if I want to try to learn something, I, you know, start out the simplest possible form and just add on to it or just make changes and say, you know, what happens when I do x or what happens when I do y? Um, yeah, I mean, that's what I've been doing here is I just, you know, I'm like, oh, what happens whenever I do x or y or z? Um, but for me, I have a little bit of programming experience, or quite a lot actually, I've been doing this for a little over 10 years. Um, I'm 25, I got kind of lucky and I taught myself whenever I was 15. Um, the way that I ended up finally doing it, like I wasn't very good at it, but I had like a senior project um, in high school, well not a senior project, but like a project for a class in high school and I sort of, we were given a lot of freedom and I sort of assigned myself the programming project and I just, you know, went from there. Um, as far as like what to program, a lot of people get their start by programming like skill calculators for video games because in most programming languages, um, mathematics is really easy to do. Uh, you know, it's pretty simple to implement simple math and that's what I've seen a lot of people do is they'll just, you know, like for League of Legends or Fortnite or uh, just various things. They'll figure out, you know, like the optimal gear sort of loadout and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's what I would recommend if you're looking for stuff to program is, you know, stuff for video games or whatever you enjoy. Uh, some people do like finance calculators, uh, just, yeah, whatever you enjoy. Um, as far as how to do it, just get it down to, it's called a feedback loop, basically. What you want is you want to be able to try something, um, and then make a mistake, and then you know test your next attempt as quickly as possible. And so, yeah, um, if you have more questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, I hope that uh, helps. <laughs> No, you're never too old to start learning. Yeah, never. I know people who are, I've known people who are in their 40s who are starting to learn programming. It's not, you're never, it's never too late. Like, I, you always, it's funny because you will always feel like you started too late. Like, I started whenever I was like 15 and I wish I had started when I was like 12. <laughs> so, you will, you will always feel like you started too late, but I promise you're not. You, you, you can't, it's never too late, is what I'd like to say. Yeah, but I mean, it just, you know, you'll, you'll always feel like it's too late, but it never is. Um, it's weird. I mean, you might, if you have trouble learning something like C-sharp, you might try something like Python. Python is a little bit simpler, like to get started it's a little bit simpler, but it's not, it doesn't have like the static typing, so you'll spend a lot more time trying to figure out, you know, some things. You know, you might get errors that don't make a lot of sense, like you get like 
like you get like syntax error or something and it doesn't really explain exactly what that means. But yeah, I mean, also don't be afraid to Google stuff. Like even at my day job, like if I have a problem, there's a nine, like I Googled most of my problems. Like I'd say 95% of my problems, I just type into Google and that's fine. Um, you know, that's not because I'm lazy. That's just because there's a very high chance that somebody else has had the same problem and has figured out a much better solution than I can within the next two or three hours. And so rather than wasting two or three hours of my time, it's just better to, you know, type it into Stack Overflow or something and see what comes up. And as you, you know, as you do more programming, you get better at figuring out what's going to be useful and what's not. Like normally I can just open like a Stack Overflow page and immediately before I even read it, I know if my answer is going to be on that page. Um, but yeah. And then other than that, I mean, I would just look up a bunch of uh, tutorials on YouTube. That's a lot of how I learned. Well, how I learned was actually um, on the TI-83 calculator, because I was programming, I was actually programming stuff for math class, like, um, you know, because TI-83s can't do factoring, but if you know a little bit of the programming language, you can actually program them to do factoring. And so um, I would do that, and then all the other people in my math class who didn't know how to do that, um, I would offer to install it on their calculators, you know, install the programs that I wrote uh, for a small fee. And, uh, <laughs> you know, that was, that was an experience because, you know, it doesn't work and people get angry and yeah, that's fun. So yeah, people usually start with stuff like that, and then, yeah, variables. And then they do like the basic math operations, and then user input and stuff like that. And then, mm hmm okay, that's cool. Yeah, and then like once you know the basics, like then you can get into stuff like object-oriented programming, and that's a little bit more, that's a little bit more interesting. That's, that's where stuff gets really crazy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, if you ever have any more questions, feel free to come back. Um, I don't know, I might do some Unity stuff at some point, I don't know. I've been wanting to do it, but I just haven't. I want to get this stuff kind of working, but I might do that, and that's C-sharp, so. Oh yeah, you could look into Unity as well. Unity's like game development, and so that might be fun as well, depending on how you feel about video games. through this okay yeah you might look into unity because that's that's really fun like unity is a game engine it's you know it over the years it has been designed specifically so that people who don't know a lot about programming can get into game development and so the fun might be enough to sort of carry you you know might be enough to incentivize you to learn more of the programming Plus, a lot of uh, popular games are made with Unity. I think Among Us is actually made with Unity. Oh yeah, another thing you can do is you can look at, if you, can, if you know what GitHub is, you can actually go on GitHub and look at what other people have written as well. That's one way to learn too, is to read what other people have written. Because it can show you how to do cool things. Uh, you know, I don't think you have to make one to read stuff. If you just if you just want to go on there to read stuff, I don't think you need to. I mean, you could. I think if you want to like download the code, I think for some of it you do, and that might be useful for you too, is to like download a library or a project that someone else has made and just modify it a little bit. 
again, I mean, like whenever you whenever you start out programming, you don't usually write massive programs. You just kind of want to modify stuff and sort of see what you're going to get. Um, the main thing is being able to predict what a modification will do. Like once you can do that, it comes down to just you know you can then write programs much easier. But like if you try to if you start out trying to write a program, it can get hard just because it's hard to. It's like, it's like the difference between knowing how to read a language and knowing how to speak it. Like, you know, a lot of people can learn how to read something easier than they can learn how to speak it. And, you know, at a certain point it just becomes copying sentences that other people speak and, you know, changing them a little bit until they fit your situation. And eventually it sounds fluent. I'm gonna test this again. Um, oh yeah, I know what I was gonna do. I was just gonna pass in not this. I'm gonna pass in new. Um, oh right, I need to make right, 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 right. That's what I need to do. Okay. Um, so if what we need to do is we need to check for interactors. So we'd say if let's say var uh, click equals method get annotation uh, click dot class okay so if click not equals null then what we'd like to do is in here in the decorator we need to be able to set the click interactor so we need to say public uh, void set click interactor this no god what am I doing oh my god no interactor no uh, so yeah we just need to say this hey, you can't get that why can you not not applicable. Uh, it's not? Oh, right. Because that's not the annotation. Um, that's the annotation. No, it isn't. That is. Uh, also, why is that being imported? No. <laughs> That one needs to be imported. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I need to say is var uh, decorator is new element uh, element uh, element interactor. Oh, how does it work? Um, so the way. Uh, so GitHub, there's a tool, there's a command line tool called Git. Basically what Git is, is it's a uh, storage, it's like a way to store files. Um, that's what, well GitHub, it's hard to explain. So GitHub is just, a, basically it's like a database of files. Um, and so Git is the program that you use to interact with GitHub. And so what Git does is Git, it tracks like changes between files. Uh, so it's like a super efficient way. It does it in a very efficient way. It doesn't just store like multiple copies of the file. It stores a thing called a diff, which is just the changes between two versions. So you can store, you know, hundreds of thousands of changes and have it be several times smaller than storing hundreds of thousands of files. Um, let me just go on to GitHub and see. Let me see something. Apache Commons uh, Git. Let me see if I can share this. Um, it wouldn't be a browser. It'd be a window capture. And what would I want to capture? I would want to capture Git. Okay. So yeah, let me just switch over to Git. So this is the um, repo for... It's a, a library called uh, Apache Commons-Commons-Lang. Uh, and so um, 
it's a very common like Java library. It has like a lot of just common functions that we wish Java had that it doesn't and that the devs won't add for some reason. Okay, there we go. I want my, I want my face visible. So yeah, basically what it is is it just stores a copy of all the files. Uh, so if you go into like source, uh, main commons lang3, you can sort of look into all the, you know, file system, like the whole file system of it. But usually like when, like if you know the name of a project, you can sort of search for it on Git. Um, so we can go to text, we could go to something like, oh god, what's a good one? No, I don't like text. Is there a math one? Just build it as arch. Where? So, okay, let's talk. Let's look at annotation utils. So yeah, this is like a Java file. Um, what we can do, the crazy thing about Git, is we can check out the history of the file, because so we can see all the times that it was modified, you know, ever. Then we can go into it and we can see that I don't know if you can see the colors here. Oh yeah, you can see them way better than I can. So you can see this red line means that this was removed and this was added. Um, in this case, it looks like null was just removed here and replaced with an empty string. Yeah. And so that's what git is actually for. And it does this, it has these changes for every file. So basically, if there's a bug in your code, you can actually go back and see the exact change that caused the bug. So it's really cool. Um, but yeah, you can just read the files normally here. And I think there's other stuff. There's like issues. So it's like pull requests. So these are the changes that other people wanted to make. So like this one, you know, add uh, final variable dot try. And so you can see this is the conversation, but the files changed is right here. And so this tells you, you can look at the conversation. This will tell you what the person's trying to do. And this is the lines that they changed to make it do that. And so this is the sort of stuff that people use to review like, you know, changes between two different versions of code. And so that's that's actually part of my job is to review change request or merge requests like this and just review the file changes and make sure that they actually aren't going to cause problems. Yeah, it's a brief explanation of git. But it's like Git is the protocol, like the program. It's like a command line tool, whereas GitHub is the actual storage. Uh, there used to be there's GitHub, and then there's the other one. Oh, there's GitLab. Yeah, GitLab is the other one. And you can okay, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Like it's it's really it's really cool whenever you work on a team and you can just sort of see what someone did, especially if you find a line that's broken. There's a there's a command called blame that will tell you who wrote it, <laughs> so that's always fun. It's even more fun to find a, a broken line and then, you know, you run blame and then it blames you and it's like, oh, that's not fun. <laughs> Whoops. Um, yeah. All right, it's page factory, yes. So we need to create, what am I doing? Oh yes, create the decorator. Then if click exists, then we need to say, oh wait, var, Decorator equals new element interactor element 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 interactor decorator. There we go. Decorator de decorator dot set click interactor new say ooh how are we gonna get that? I know what we can do interactor equals, oh no, uh, class.forname, no, 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 class.forname, uh, no, actually, wait, you wouldn't, no, 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 because the interactor would be, uh, you'd want to create an instance of it, so it would be click dot, uh, click, click dot value. Click is not equal to null. Yeah, click's not equal to null. Then click dot value dot get, con or no. Can I just do new instance? Yes, I can. All right. I don't want to try catch, but that'll be fine. Actually, 
just create a new instance, and then we can say interactor. Oh, you don't like that. No. So I'm having trouble understanding strings. So example, if I put string name equal username dot readline, anything they type there as their username and put username in any piece of code, it will save. So I'm having trouble understanding strings. So well, if I put string username console.readline, anything they type there as username. Yeah, so whenever you um, assign something like, say, this for, or, wait, yeah. So you have a string username. In this case, we just use var. Var, you have, C, or you have var in uh, C sharp. All it does is it d figures out what the type is going to be. But yeah, whenever I assign, say, locate by to page class.get annotation, whatever get annotation returns, so in this case, it's this locate by object, it'll get assigned to this locate by. And so I think in Java they have like a scanner class or something. I think in Java we use like a scanner, I can't remember. Let me see if I can. So it's like scanner s equals new scanner. Scanner uh, input source that would be system dot in. And then I think we would do like system out read line. Oh, read like, oh, what am I doing? Print line. It's too late. <laughs> so you'd say, like, you know, input username or something. And then I think you do s dot uh, next line. Or not, no, not read line. No. Next line. Next line? Yeah, next line. So you could say, like, var username equals that. And then, yeah. So if I run this. We run this. Oh, it doesn't like something. It doesn't like this. Okay, you know what? Forget it. Yeah, so if I run this, it should ask me for my username. Wait, why are you still not happy? Oh my god. Eclipse is so needy sometimes. Yeah, I think I would get, yeah, input username. So I'd say, you know, red plus blue. And then, yeah, uh, if we debug this, debug as job application, yeah, so what we can do is you know, red plus blue. And so if we go into debug mode here, you one thing you should probably learn how to do early on is learn how the debugger works. Um, so this is a breakpoint, basically whenever the code gets to this line, it'll do what's called break, it'll just like stop the code from running, so see, uh, we don't have the work done here. Uh, we can actually inspect these variables, and so you can actually look at this, and you can see, if I go over to the actual variables tab, the s variable, oh no, username has uh, red plus blue in it. Yeah, as you can see, uh, I, you see why I like C sharp more though, because in C sharp you don't have to do this, you just do console.readline. You don't have to create a scanner, it's, bleh, it's lame. I don't like C sharp. No, I don't like Java, <laughs> but I use it for my day job, so I can think in it much faster than I can think in C-sharp. Sure, so oh God, that's the last thing I wanted you to do. Let's try again. Sure. Um, it's not going to be new instance, though. It's going to be get constructor. Sure, no. It's going to be, yeah, get constructor. Don't worry about param types because you don't have any. Uh, and then is it invoke? I think it's invoke. Or is it apply? Can I call new instance on the constructor? I most certainly can. Sure. <laughs> yeah, this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> Don't ever do this. <laughs> Actually, let's just make this a little bit worse. Just for testing. Uh, Alright, so surely if I put a 
breakpoint on the JavaScript interactor. It would surely break, right? Let's try this. Let's debug this and see what we get. Oh, it didn't break. Oh. So that means that it's not running. Oh, yeah, well, you know, it would actually help if I put the interactor on it. Uh, just in case you're actually curious what I'm doing. Um, so for my day job, I am an automation tester. So like I test, um, like I write Java code that will open up a browser and actually run it and test that a website works. And so I'm I have the theory that I can write a better automation framework than the one that we currently use. Uh, spoiler alert, I helped write it. Um, but uh, I, I have the feeling that I can write a better one, so I'm trying to do that. Um, I don't have my OBS configured so that the browser pops up, but whenever you see the red text, that's Selenium running. Um, but yeah, stuff that I'm doing is a little bit more complicated than I would like, but it's working. So I will keep doing it. Uh, let's see, JavaScript, JavaScript. Oh, I didn't call it that. I called it a click, click, JavaScript interactor dot class. Yes, that's what I called it. Ugh. OK. So if I run this, now if I run this in debug, it should work. Hmm. It doesn't. Why? What happened? Okay. a breakpoint here. So what did you not find? On method. So this is button. Why do you not get that's with annotation, okay. But it's there. Am I dumb? Browser module.annotations.click. Browser module.annotations.click. How then is this equal to null? I am much confused. Okay. Declared annotations. No, there's not one, there's two. What? I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry? What? Okay, yes. Yes. Why do you think? Oh! Oh my god, I did it. Uh, I do that every single time I write annotations. Always screws me up. I know what I did. I forgot to tell it to actually retain the annotation. That is my. Oh. Yes, that will work now. Well, it'll eliminate one bug. Um, I guess Java application. Okay. Nope, you're still null. Why are you still that null? That's wrong. I don't understand. Okay. So that's fine. In test page, put this. I have told it to retain, to retain this at runtime, so it should be retained at runtime. But it's not. So the class is test page. Yes. OK. The 
declared annotations. There's only one. Why is there only one? Hmm. I'm very confused. Hmm. Okay. So this links to that. Yes. Okay. Just gonna wait. Where's Maven? Where's Maven? Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna do that and just have you just have Eclipse rewrite all of this and see what we get. that we're inspecting is dot hello world okay wait dot hello world what oh this is the first one I'm dumb I'm very dumb okay never mind that did work okay so that part worked that's good um, now it's the actual JavaScript click interactor now why did we not get that so we have click interactor, we have interactors.click, we have JavaScript click interactor. So, in theory, if I debug this, it should, we should get a break here, regardless of whether or not, or did we actually decorate the element? Aha, that's the problem. That is one problem. So, let's hope there is no more. you not? I don't understand. Okay, at least decorate should have been called. Okay, at least decorate is called now. So the click interactor is never set. Okay, why is that? Let's create the interactor here. Do we lose? Do we get the exception? We didn't get an exception. I mean, we could put the break, put a breakpoint there, and rerun it. But we shouldn't. Let's see. Okay, so no exception. However. The decorator is null. No. Wait, the decorator is not null. No, wait. The decorator is not null, but the interactor in the decorator is null. Okay. Click is not null. So, okay, we just need to. Oh, but. Right, I know what I'm doing that's wrong. Okay keep forgetting that this is not what I wanted it to do. Okay, so create the decorator there. So actually, God, I'm sorry, my brain is just not working today. <laughs> it's just too late. Uh, let's set this to null. Um, and then in here, oh God, don't, no, who cares? Don't, we don't need you to do that. Uh, we'll say, put the far there. Okay, now, uh, null is not a constructor, you can't do that. I'll just say decorator equals new um, element uh, interactor decorator, there we go. That way, if it is, now, now for hello world, it will get put, we will get a, um, starting to sound like Joe Biden, geez. Um, <clears throat> okay, 
two elements. We have the hello world element that doesn't have any configuration. That one is going to be null, or the decorator is going to be null because we don't have a click interactor on it. Okay, and then for the button which has the JavaScript click interactor, it won't, it won't be null. Therefore, um, the decorator will get created and then assigned into here. Right. Okay. Given that, the JavaScript click interactor should be called in debug mode. So. If I debug this, whenever I get this working, I'm going to go to bed because I'm way too tired, apparently. <sighs> of course. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. So, the decorator. Now it's null. Why is it null? No, really, like, why is it... It's null. This is decorated element locator. But... So this always returns the decorator. Okay, actually, that's fine. Uh... Wait, let's the XPath locator. So the XPath locator here is hello world, that's fine. Now the decorator is not null, the JavaScript click interactor exists, okay. So given that, we should get decorator.decorate, yes. And then it should return the element, so we won't need this. Um, let's just run to the next breakpoint, which is here run to the next breakpoint, which is in here, okay. So we have the click interactor, therefore, if we go here, but click is never called. Why is click never called? Because it definitely should be. Uh, it is in the event firing web element? Interesting. Should be in the browser module, browser module.click. We're not using virtual elements, we're using selenium elements or web elements. So it's in here. It should be called locator.click element locator. Oh my god. Alright, so debug this. We should at least get element, or I should at least get a breakpoint here, yeah. So the arguments, locator is the element on page locator with the button test page, yes. All of that's correct. So the element is button, yes, that, that is completely correct. Um, those are the only two bits of information we get, huh? Alright, so I think there's a way to show the return value. If we execute that? No. Can we inspect that? Mm, so this gets a selenium element. This is an element on page locator. Oh, this is not a dec decorated element locator. Okay. Oh, okay. That's. This returns an element literal locator, right? Oh, so this is an XPath locator. No, it's a decorated element. So, why is it an element on page locator? No, that's fine. So, this is a page factorator. Get locator 4, yeah. That'll have a locator on it. Yeah, I'm quite confused as to why this is not working. Decorated element locator. But add listener, add pages listener, okay. Build test of implementation element oh, interactor decorator, okay. No, it needs to be in here, right. 
So into the element, I click on the element. No, wait. So this is the attribute on the element. What we need is a click on the element. To an element, the user clicks the element. Okay, this is going to be the issue with this um, way of doing things. Hmm. Ah, but it's the user, right? So it clicks the element. So new. Aha! So it's hard coded here. And you're the thing. Hmm. No, but the element on page locator. That's fine. You should return on page get element right. So if we go into not the page factory, but the actual page. So it should be the default page, right? And you should return the button. Yes. All right. So we debug you one more time. Okay, so this is for Hello World. We're going to ignore that. This is for Decorator Null Hello World. We're going to ignore that. So click Test Button, Test Page. So the locator here is the element on page locator. And this is the so this is the element on page locator. So let's go into that. Let's see what we find here. This is page class dot get simple name, okay. Step return. So element name to locator, yeah. Dot get dot get context. Yeah. And element name to locator should have in it. I don't know why it has get element, but okay. It has button, and the value should not. Hmm. No, the element that should be what it has. And then the XPath locator should return the decorated copy, right? Yes. OK. So we just run to decorate. OK. We have a new Selenium element. That's fine. We go into decorate. And we run to the next breakpoint. The decorator should not be null, which it's not. Return decorator. Aha. That's the issue the element, we want to return this. Ah, wow, that took forever. <sighs> Jeez. Success, wait, did it? Or did it break? Um. Oh yeah, we need to get rid of this. Haha, -ha, there we go. There we go. It's the JavaScript element. Yes. Okay, and it has a web element, so it didn't skip. Yes. Okay. Now if we step return, I think that worked. Huzzah. Okay. And now we no longer need to do this. Okay. Yeah, screw it. I don't. I don't care. Remove. Remove all breakpoints. It's fine. Okay, so that ran. Now, to do the negative test on it, let's make this invalid. Uh, w a s d. Sure. And now, if I did this right, this should run, and I can actually sleep. Well, if I run, it should not run. It should actually die. Ha! It did. Yes, amazing. Oh, so amazing. Okay. 
Perfect. Now they should just run.click and make it correct JavaScript. We should probably put an actual semicolon, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, now, if I run this, it should work again. And then we have a test page. Again, control click on test page. I can eliminate the, yes, it worked, awesome. I can eliminate this and it should also work. Huzzah, okay. All right, I am way too exhausted to keep going with this. I have been going for like an hour and a half. Um, yeah, so that was more, uh, so that was the, we got the first part of the interactor system sort of working. Um, this is like sort of the pattern that I'm going for, for how you're going to specify the interactors. Um, basically, they're going to use this decorator pattern here to override specific um, methods within the, um, or no, this decorator pattern here to override specific methods within um, an element itself. Um, and if they don't have, or if you don't specify an actual um, override, then it just uses the default on the element. But uh, anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow.